Hello everyone, hi this is Kevin here. So in this next um, short video, I will want to share with you how you can manage your customer and vendor database on uh, Wave accounting apps. So in fact, um, alright, so I am in the dashboard of my company Snapshot and you can see that uh, it has already suggested that some things that you can do is to add a customer and or to add a vendor I suppose um, there is a suggestion also because I have not done anything to it yet uh, alternatively if you, if you can't find it here when you enter your dashboard what you can do is uh, open up your menu and um, if you are going to add customers to your database or to manage your customers then uh, you go under the sales tab and just go down the list and you'll see here customers as for vendors it will be under purchases uh, and then you'll see the vendors over here all right so let me just start off with the customer first okay so i have had um created one previously so let us just run through the exercise and uh, create another one from scratch alternatively Alternatively, if you already have had a existing database that you would like to import over to Wave, there's two options you can do so. You can actually do it via um, Google Contacts or you can actually um, export your database in CSV format and upload into Wave Accounting. So you can do that here also. If you have already had a um, previous list that you are managing and you do not want to do one by one. But if you want to do them the manual way, Right, so all you have to do is to add a customer and very straightforward, um, um, you will see here the contact details, billing details, shipping and more if there's anything. So uh, let me just, let us just go through customer, let's just say the customer is called ABC Private Limited. And then next up you put the email, in this case email is probably one of the most important information because uh, when you when you want to send out invoices or send out um, bills or anything um, those customer with the email input will be you will be eligible for them to receive the invoice uh, electronically so so that's pretty important so just just do some uh, so just make sure you find out what's the email that they commonly use for their business okay I'm just gonna randomly do a abc at hotmail.com phone number if there's any all right so ultimately this become your database also contact uh, who's the person in charge of abc private limited so maybe john tan all right okay and when you build them what's the default currency so so um, for us, we do it in Sing dollars. So I'm just gonna keep it. So whichever currency that you set by default when you send it over to them, it will be in this default currency that you set. So remember to uh, set it correctly. So of course the uh, customer, you know, their business address. So make sure you um, try to input as much as you can. Even if you do not have the uh, physical address, I think that is fine for most cases. A lot of times, a lot of my customers in my database are e-commerce business or uh, home run business. So the physical address is not that important. What, what is really important is you got to get the email address correct so that when you send invoices to them, it will reach their inbox. Okay, so... Uh, can choose a country right let me just go with Singapore okay shipping you can specify a shipping address if you want to or you can just leave it blank and there's more right if you have their bank account number or you have their website so you can enter all of those in as much as you can right or oops or any notes that you would like to um, input so that the rest of your team members can be aware of as well so all you have to do is to save it okay and there you have it you have this so the the good thing about doing all this is when you create an invoice okay let me just go to a creation of the invoice 
you will see that there's this part where you can choose who are you going to send it to. Right, so here, over here, add a customer. So if you have added, um, you of course you can create from here. Uh, if, if you have not done so at the point of creating this invoice, if not, then um, all the customers that you have dealt with before will appear here. So you can do a search if you have a very long list. If not, you can just input and all their details will be uh, retrieved from the system and input into the invoice accordingly. Okay, so moving on, uh, the same will go for vendors. It's actually exactly the same process. It's just that they have uh, um, separated it into vendors and customers. So for customers, you will send invoices. For vendors, you will record bills that come from them. So um, if it's just a one-off uh, purchases that you make from random uh, service providers most of the time I will not uh, bother to to input the vendors um, diligently but um, for those that you actually get regular billings from them like say maybe your internet service provider or your web hosting company that will charge you for um, your web hosting every year every quarter so these are these are regular vendors so these are uh, people that you will want to have them in your context so again you can import them from your csv file or google context if not then you can do a manual edition okay so same thing vendor so let's this time let's just do a qwe private limited okay um, email in this case the email uh, good to have but not that important because uh, you do not actually send things out to them rather you actually record incoming billings from them but nevertheless uh, it will pay to be as uh, meticulous as possible with your data entry so that if you ever need to search for anything then it kind of become your ad hoc CRM system okay so who's the first name uh, maybe it's David Lim all right, same thing, currency and which country is the vendor from. So I will just go with Singapore. Okay, address if any. Uh, X, 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 X. Okay, um, next. Okay, city. SG. And the postal code. Right. If there's any ad additional in information, you can just expand the list and then um, see if you want to put in the account number so that you can remember uh, what account to pay to every time you need to make payment. Their contact details, mobile number, website. Okay, if you're done, just press save. Okay, and then you have a vendor created. So how does this work? Uh, is when you go under bills. So if you receive bills from certain vendors, then um, you can create a bill and save them under the particular vendor. So you can see here, if you want to sort um, uh, vendors by vendors or you want to filter the bills from a particular vendors, you can do so over here. So, so you have a long list if you, if you, as you slowly build up and you can actually sort them from time to time as well. So I will do the creation of bill in another tutorial, but just very quickly. So once you create a bill, uh, you can actually choose the vendor. So in this case, there's only one QWE private limited, or you can you can add a new vendor from here as well. So once you have entered in, then the rest you know just fill in accordingly and save, and then you will be safe under this uh, QWE private limited. Okay, so that's all for this quick tutorial. Um, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.